Teachers probably use presentations more than most other professions out there. If you think that you're teaching five, six, sometimes more lessons in a day, each one of those lessons usually needs some sort of slides or resources to go with them. So if we can use things like artificial intelligence to support with creating those, it's going to save teachers a lot of time and hopefully support their well-being. So I'm always on the lookout for really strong tools to support with that. When I was having a scroll through LinkedIn recently, I saw a guy called Darren Cox and share this tool. And as I played with it myself, was a little bit baffled by how supportive it was, what it created, how it was so comprehensive, and really wanted to delve into and show you just some of the things that this can do, because I know that it's going to save you time and support with hopefully your well-being. So this is the tool here. It's called Kimmy. Now, Kimmy acts as a normal large language model and you can delve into it and ask questions and things like that. But what I really liked is this tool right here, which is called Kimmy Slides. So it says, drop the idea, I'll draft an outline and then build the deck. Now, what I'm planning on doing with this video is giving you something a little bit vague and basic, talking about how you can make it a little bit better, then show you a what I did earlier <laughs> type of presentation and show you what that looks like. So if we look into this, I'm just going to paste in a prompt. We're at that time where it's kind of back to school now. So it, I'm going to go for back to school slides for the 25 to 26 academic year. Now, obviously, with your prompting, you wanna give it some context, you wanna give it a little bit more background. But for the purpose of this video to show you how comprehensive it is and what it can do, I'm, I'm gonna leave it vague, just let it build out. So we're gonna press go and you can see it's using elements from the, the internet to support with that, like a lot of other large language models will do. As it's having a research, it's having a little bit of a think about those different things. And you can see now it's starting to build that slide outline. So here we go. Okay, now rather than just sit and watch this be typed out, I'm gonna speed run this a little bit and then tell you how long kind of roughly it took to make this. Okay, so this literally took a minute. It's not as comprehensive as well, the one I made, but I'm hoping that by leaving it quite blank, it's able to kind of bolster and create slides that are a little bit better from this. Now, if I wanted to go back in, obviously, because this is a chain of thought prompting style, I could then go back in and ask it to adapt things, change things, add a bit more context. But for now, I'm just literally gonna press generate slides. From there, you'll see that there's a bunch of different templates here. Now, you'll notice they're not all kind of education related. Some are quite corporate is the word, perhaps a bit boring. Uh, I quite like this one. I quite like this one as well. Um, this one perhaps is a bit, bit more back to school-esque. So I'm gonna tap onto that one. Yeah, we'll go with that and press generate slides. <laughs> this is what I love. Look at it go. This is real time. I am gonna speed this up in a second, but it's, whizzing through. What you'll find sometimes on about slide three, it kind of pauses. It's not broken. It's just having a little bit more of a think about what it wants to create. I quite like the pictures with this template that it is generating. I think it's quite appropriate for back to school message. Okay, like I did with the prompt, I'm going to speed run this and then come back as and when it's created. Okay, this took just under two minutes to create and you can see it's created 20 slides, which is probably perfect for a presentation to parents. And that's who it's aimed at parents because I didn't give it any additional context. You can see it's given us an overview. We can go into the slides now and we can change it really simply. And I can drag that out so we can see it properly. I can go and I can change the font. There's not many fonts, but I can do that and I can make it bigger, etc. I can drag those around I can even drag the pictures around, which is really cool. From here, I can look and I can copy things across, delve into that. But I like the way that it's been set out. Now, obviously, if I was giving it a little bit more context, I could be more specific with the actual things that are applied to my school. You'd still need to be quite careful with things like GDPR and, or FERPA, making sure that you're thinking about what it is that you're putting into these large language models, making sure that you're thinking about your school's data and not putting anything sensitive into them because we're not, you know, trusting them too much. 
Um, but you could then download this and manually manipulate it as I'll show you in a second. But the first day of school is da 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 da. It gives you those areas that you can edit them. And as you can see, it's done a lot better. It really added a little bit more information because it was quite vague beforehand when it was planning it out. Um, so as we look at the daily routines, I could then go and I could put a proper little timetable in there if I had one from my school. Curriculum, I quite like the picture that's attached to this. It is USA spelling at the moment because I've not emphasized that I want UK, UK spelling, but I can look, I am so-and-so. So like I've said there, I'm gonna be changing that around a little bit who the specialist this would have been perfect for me for last year now obviously I could then come and I could delete and I could add a picture in of something all the different supplies and te tech that they need to bring in and yeah it's just a, a strong starting point I think is the main thing would you use this and as a proper full-on lesson or slides perhaps if it was adapted but this is the main thing it's going to probably do the, the around 70 to 85% of the work, you as the human still need to then come in and do the, the remaining 10, 15%. So it's really strong. If I were then to press download, I could download it as an image, I would go for PowerPoint, and then you can upload it to something like Microsoft PowerPoint, Google Slides, and, and adapt it from there with ease. Like I said before, in true style, I'm going to go back and show you one that I did earlier. So we'll go to the editable back to school one. And this is the one that I did earlier. Like I said, it's quite fun. This is one that I would be facing the children with. Is it a little bit too much in terms of text for a primary school setting? Absolutely, I would be changing that. But I, I like the, the format, I like the slides. I like the activities that have been produced. Again, I just added that in a classroom tour, virtual tour. So this, these are the different areas that we're going to be looking at. And, and again, if you were doing a virtual tour, would I literally have a slide for that? Probably not, but it's there as a reminder. I could delete all those things. And I could just put pictures in instead, perhaps. You know, it, it's there as an option. class charter, class rules, our promise poster, so that would be an activity, final day reflection, and it's even put in a hopes and dreams exit ticket. I really like the numbers and the way that that's been formatted too. With that final thank you from me, Thomas Blakemore. So yeah, there we go. This is a really comprehensive tool. I think that it's something that, because it's free, you can just keep using it over and over for the time being. Whether it changes in the future, I'm not too sure. However, to start off with, this is something that I know that many teachers would find quite useful to start by mapping out their topics, their lessons. Um, in the future, I hope that there's more templates that are added in, perhaps for things like humanities, and more mathematical looking slide templates. But as a starting point, really strong, and I know that teachers are going to save time using this tool. So I'd like to share it. If you haven't already gone to my website to check out some of the stuff that I create to support teachers with using EdTech and AI, make sure you do that on my website, teachtraveltriumph.com. I'll leave a link in my description and up in one of the corners. On top of that, if you haven't yet subscribed to see more of these EdTech style tutorials and AI tutorials, feel free to do that and hopefully I'll create another one coming up that's going to save you time. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, I'm out.